What's going on, good people? Welcome back to another episode of the Bison Training Show, coming at you live from the Bison Training Labs. Today is Thursday, May 13th, and today we're coming at you for another market analysis session, ready to break down some charts for you guys. Not only that, but we want to get into a couple of different, you know, different chart patterns that you might not have heard about, but you probably seen and you probably know of, and we want to break that down to you and give you some knowledge on that. And of course, our new our new segment that we have, our financial exploration section, we want to dive into that and teach you something new about the markets today, too, so make sure you stay tuned. If you don't know, I'm half of the Bison Trading Show crew. I go by the name of Todd Trades Futures, and of course, I'm here with my guy. You already know who it is, man. It's your boy. I'm the D-Guy, a.k.a. Pro Financial. Man, I hope you guys have your notebooks and have your pens, because we really about to drop some knowledge on y'all tonight. Not to get too much or give the secret away, I hope you guys have a little bit of knowledge of crude oil because that's just a little stuff that we're going to just dive into. So I'm not going to let the cat out the bag too early, but let's just hop right on and let me stop talking. So let's go. Let's dig in. All right. So let's go ahead and get it started, man. Let's start with our handy dandy US 30, a.k.a. the Dow Jones. Now... This pair has been making some moves since we last talked. I think we last talked on May 11th. We were dealing we were dealing with this candle right here from 34,750 that ran all the way down about 500 points. We were telling you guys how crazy of a move that was. Now, prices continue to run and that officially put us in pullback territory. Pullbacks are anything more than 5 or 10%. So anywhere within that range. So if we measure, let's actually measure from the top real quick to the bottom. So boom, right there on 5%. So that's something that we need to take into consideration. Now, something that I really find interesting is the fact that sometimes when you see down movements like this on the Dow Jones, you can't get fooled by this type of pattern that you see right here. Now this right here is what we like to call a dead cat bounce, where you have a strong, sharp, down movement right and you get a move to the upside that's why it's called a dead cat bounce because even the cat that falls from a large height is going to bounce up a little bit when it hits the ground but just because it bounces up doesn't mean the cat is alive the market is still dead and in our scenario the market is really not back into a bullish uh, a bullish territory until it passes the most previous and most recent breakdown red candle so that right here would be the candle from may 12th from yesterday now, the high for this candle is 34325 So until we get back above 325 we really can't say that the bull trend is back on. Now, we have a few signs that point to the fact that maybe this could potentially be, you know, the pullback area where it would, where it would stop at and that this would be the pivot point where prices would continue to go up. Because if we look to the left, we can follow this last wick right here, right? Let's follow that all the way over. Look what that runs into. That runs into what used to be an all-time high back on March 18th and back on March 30th. So that's a good sign when you see prices bounce off of a level like that. Now, all we need for the bull trend to be to be confirmed is that break above 325. But I gotta I gotta advise that we be a little bit cautious here. And the reason is if we go back and look at similar movements to what we've seen over the past three candles, one, two, three. Right. Let's go back to March 18th. We had one, two, three. Right. Not as significant of a down move. And we had a little uh, tweezer, not tweezer bottom, but long tail candle wick. We bounced up. Right. That's that scenario. But there have been plenty of other times where we had a large down movement and then we had a bounce. Say, for instance, this candle right here. Notice how we on September 3rd, we fell, we fell, we fell. And we came back to a major support level. We bounced back up. We never broke past the most recent uh, bear candle. If you don't break past that bear candle, the sellers see that as an opportunity for them to step back in and continue pushing the market down. So we always want to make sure that we get past that breakdown candle before we start going long again. Now, that's the daily chart. Let's kind of break it back down to uh, the four hours so we can really see what's going on and get a better picture. Now... Right here, we can kind of see exactly what I'm talking about. Notice how before this down move happened, actually, this is the level that Darren was talking to you guys about yesterday. I mean, on Tuesday, 
we were talking about how this overall area was pretty much the top of a consolidation period. Notice how we had all of this bullish momentum today. So look, at where bull, look at where the bulls eventually worked their way up to. Right back to the top of that consolidation zone, but they failed to be able to break back through it. Now that's important because that tells us that even though the bulls had all of that strength, they still couldn't break past the major levels of resistance. So it's not completely confirmed that the bull trend is back on quite yet. So let's bring up our support and resistance and let's really truly kind of get a gauge on it. So also one more thing. Notice, I don't know if you guys were remember what happened about two to three weeks ago, but we were trending in this zone right here between 34,205 and 33,800 from about April 6th all the way until May 4th. So that was a very critical zone of consolidation. Now, all we've done is really come back up into the zone. We pushed past it a little bit. We can really consider that more of a false break. No, because it pushed past, but it didn't stay there for longer than a day. So that's not really a real break, in my opinion. All we did was push through, we tested it, and then came right back into the zone. So until we break back above those levels that we told you that we told you about before at 325, and if we zoom in a little bit, probably 200, I can't say that the uptrend is back on yet. So I would be a little bit cautious. We have retail sales coming out tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So that should be a nice little catalyst that could either move this market higher or continue to push down lower. So we'll have to come uh, tomorrow morning for our live trading session at 9 10 a.m and see exactly what that retail number holds and how it'll affect the markets and how we want to trade based on what we see from that announcement but other yo 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 hello yo bro yo bro Yo, my boy, you there? Yo, bro, bro.